Hi everyone, it's Dr. Galliana here from Hackensack Middle School celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. Um, I'm proud to say that I am of Hispanic heritage. Um, my mother's from Nicaragua and my father's from España, Spain, and I'll be sharing some of that information with you and some of my uh, memories and some of the great parts of my culture. Um, bienvenidos al mes de herencia hispana. Uh, hoy voy a hablar sobre mi herencia de nicaragüense y español, y aquí vamos a comenzar. Um, so again, Hispanic Heritage Month, September 15th to October 15th. Uh, this is the culmination. We'll be sharing with you a lot of videos um, from different uh, faculty members and administrators uh, as we celebrate our Hispanic heritage. Okay, so my parents emigrated to um, the United States in 1972. My mom's from Nicaragua and my father's from Spain. Here they are in 1972, the year they came uh, to America. Um, aquí están mis padres, mi mamá de Nicaragua y mi papá es de España. Um, llegaron aquí a Estados Unidos en el 1972. Um, y aquí te voy a enseñar más información de mis padres y mi herencia hispana. Um, so again, my mother is from Nicaragua. Um, she grew up in a small town uh, named Matagalpa. Uh, she has four brothers and four sisters. Uh, she married uh, my father and they immigrated to the U.S. in 1972. Um, we settled in the Bronx. That's where I was born. And then we moved to Jersey City. Um, and that's where I grew up. Um, so mi mamá nació en Nicaragua, en el pueblo de Matagalpa. Tiene cuatro hermanos y cuatro hermanas. Y llegaron aquí a los Estados Unidos en el 1972. Llegamos en el Bronx y después lo mudamos a Jersey City. Okay, um, so Nicaragua is located in Central America, um, and it is a beautiful country with a lot of uh, volcanoes, and I'll share some of that information with you, and, and I'll also share some pictures of when I uh, visited uh, almost every summer when I was a kid. Um, okay. Okay, here are some, some cool pictures of me when I was a kid uh, at my grandfather's farm. Uh, with my cousin Jesse, taught me how to ride a horse, um, and then milking some cows. So a uh, very uh, rural area my mother was from, um, and she grew up on a farm. So uh, mi mamá nació en Matagalpa. Aquí estoy en la finca de mi abuelo con mi primo Jesse, que uh, me enseñó a, a estar en un, en un caballo. Um, y aquí estoy también uh, pequeñito um, en Nicaragua. Okay, so Nicaragua is known for its lake, Lake Nicaragua, one of the biggest lakes in the world. Um, it is a freshwater lake, and you can find um, the only wor the world's only known freshwater sharks there. Um, lots of volcanoes, 400 volcanoes can be found in Lake Nicaragua. And, and one of the things that happened there was there was a, a big earthquake in 1972, um, around the time my parents came to America. Um, so I heard uh, growing up a lot of stories about um, the earthquake and how it devastated the country and, and my mom's family. Um, so something very historical, even though I wasn't born yet, um, oh, that happened in uh, Nicaragua that I'll always remember and hear the stories about. Um, a, a typical food in Nicaragua, um, gallo pinto, one of my favorite um, can eat it for breakfast, lunch, dinner, um, with, with, uh, steak or chicken or anything. It's, it's just, uh, red beans and white rice with diced onions. And, um, just talking about it makes my mouth water. Um, also nacatamales, which are very, very, um, typical of Nicaraguan culture. Um, and, um, here's a picture of it. And, and again, growing up, I, I remember my, my mom and my aunts making this and, and just, um, um, chowing down and feasting on this still still makes my mouth water and I still love getting um, together with my aunt and, and my mother and uh, eating foods like this and the typical foods. Um, so comida típica de Nicaragua, el gallo pinto y nacatamales que todavía está este día cuando visito con mis uh, tías y, y mi mamá um, y mis primos um, comemos y, y um, lo disfrutamos mucho. <laughs> Okay, some famous Nicaraguans, just in case 
uh, anyone uh, is wondering. Dennis Martinez, uh, again, I when I grew up, he was a, a big deal, um, a major league pitcher, Hall of Famer, uh, won tons of games and just very well known. Uh, Pablo Antonio Cuadra, um, a, a very well known writer. Alexis Arguello, a, a famous boxer, and, and a current uh, Nicaraguan in in uh, playing major league sports is uh, Jonathan Luis Aiga, um from the New York Yankees. Um, so always, I always cheer for him a little bit extra as a Yankee fan, knowing he's from uh, Nicaragua. Okay, so my father's from Spain, which is in Europe. Uh, my father um, grew up in a very small village uh, named Tiadoncha. Um, he has uh, one brother and two sisters. He moved to Nicaragua in 1968 to further his studies. Um, and that's where he met my mother. They got married and they moved to the U.S. in 1972. So, mi papá es del país de España. Um, tiene do, una, un, dos hermanas y un hermano. Y nació en un pueblo bien pequeñito de Ciedoncha. Okay, here is actually a, a, a picture of Ciadoncha. Um, I went to Ciadoncha with my wife in 2003 um, for our honeymoon, actually. We uh, flew out to Spain and kind of just rented a car and, and explored um, Spain for about a month uh, before GPS and Waze. So it was uh, the old school map, which was a lot of fun and a lot of lost adventures. But here we are in my dad's village in Ciadoncha. Aquí estamos, um, mi esposa y yo, en Ciadoncha, en España, un pueblo bien pequeño, um, y fuimos a España para la luna de miel, y uh, lo disfrutamos mucho, um, allí um, perdiéndonos en el país um, para un mes. Um, some cool places in Spain. Um, the picture on the bottom left is the cathedral in Burgos, which um, is one of the is where my family now lives, which is one of the a famous monument and cathedral. And on the right is a picture I, I took of uh, La Alcalá in in um, Madrid. Um, so aquí está la Catedral del Burgos, que es bien famoso en el país de España, y la Alcalá de de um, Madrid. Yo tomé esas dos fotos. Um, some really cool things that happen in Spain. They're really well known for some of the festivals that go on. A really famous one is La Tomatina, which is just basically a huge um, food fight with tomatoes, um, which happens every year in Buñol. Um, Spain is also very well known for um, the running of the bulls in San Fermín. Um, when I went to Spain in 2003, um, I was and took part of the running of the bulls. Uh, very exciting for me. Um, especially, again, celebrating my culture and wanting to be a part of my culture um, and, and really just really enjoyed it. Uh, you know, my wife and I um, were in Spain for our honeymoon and we just basically drove around the country for a month just exploring, which was a lot of fun and, and some of my famous, uh, my most memorable moments in my life. Um, aquí están dos fiestas de España que son famosas, um, la fiesta de San Fermín y la Tomatina. Um, que yo no fui a la Tomatina, pero sí fui a San Fermín, uh, San Fermín para, para ver los, uh, la Correa de los Toros. So here's two pictures. Um, so the one on the right is my wife and I at the bullfight um, that happened the night of the running of the bulls. And on the left is a picture that um, was in the local newspaper. They cover it very much like the Super Bowl in that um, there's cameras and photographers everywhere. And if you look really, really closely, you can actually see me in this newspaper clipping on the running of the bull. So I'll, I'll just give it a second, see if you could find me, and, and then I'll point myself out. Uh, aquí están dos fotos de la fiesta de San Fermín. Um, aquí en la mano um, derecha estoy yo en um, la fiesta ahí uh, en la noche de la corrida de los toros. Y aquí en la mano izquierda estoy yo en una foto del periódico um, de el día que, que corrí con los toros. Um, a ver si me pueden hallar. All right. Can you find me? All right. Let's see. Here I am. Can you see me? 
I was much younger. Okay, so that's me during the running of the Bulls. Very exciting time. Um, I would love to do it again. Um, very, just very, very exciting. Again, trying to and, and being a part of and, and exploring some of my my heritage. Um, some typical foods in Spain are um, el jamón ham, um, which is uh, very typical and any almost any meal. Um, paella, which uh, most people know, and um, tortilla de uh, tortilla española, which is one of my favorites. I growing up, my dad used to make it um, every uh, Sunday morning, so that was like Sunday morning breakfast, and I look forward to it. It's like a a potato kind of um, um, breakfast with eggs and cheese and chorizo and onions it's so good um even to this day uh you know when my father won we go visit with the kids and my wife um, my dad always makes sure he makes them because he knows how much i love it um so comida típica tam- tenemos jamón paella y la tortilla española que todavía mi papá lo hace y cuando visitamos él siempre um, me lo hace porque sabe que yo lo disfruto mucho <laughs> Um, some sp- famous Spaniards, um, we have Pablo Picasso, who is a Spaniard, uh, Rafael Nadal, who actually just uh, won uh, one of the Opens, uh, actress Penelope Cruz, and uh, Pau Gasol. Here he is with um, Kobe Bryant, uh, an NBA player who, who's uh, done very well in his career in the NBA. And he has a brother in the NBA, Marc Gasol, who also does well. But Pau has won an uh, NBA championship, so I, I thought everyone might know who he is um, a little bit more. And that's it for, for some of my uh, Spanish heritage, uh, mi herencia hispana. Um, as you can see here, I have the Spanish flag, the Nicaraguan flag, and the American flag, which really is what makes me, um, because uh, being born in the U.S., obviously I am American and, and I love my American heritage, um, but I celebrate my Hispanic heritage and, and will never forget it or deny it. Um, it's important to know where we come from. Um, and I and I instill that with my children and my family. So um, celebrate your your Hispanic Heritage Month. Thank you all, and please uh, look at the videos from the teachers. And uh, uh, thank you. Hola, Hackensack Middle School. Senora Carroll here, standing in our school library. I'm actually in front of our Libros in Español section. That section has grown quite a bit. And I just wanted to showcase some highlights. Um, When you step into our library, you are met with a wide range of books that help you celebrate your Hispanic heritage. We have books that speak to the Latinx experience. We have authentic Spanish texts. So these are books that exist originally in Spanish. They may feature um, Hispanic characters, Hispanic cultures. We have fiction books all about young Hispanic characters trying to navigate their way through middle school. We have books that are written by Hispanic authors. We've got English translations of some old favorites into Spanish. And we have some beautiful bilingual books. So these are books that tell the story in both Spanish and English. They might be perfect for reading with a friend. HMS Library supports Hispanic Heritage Month. Feliz Mista La Herencia Hispana. Hola. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Mrs. Casoy, and I'm one of the fifth grade social studies teachers. In honor of Hispanic Heritage Month, I would like to share with you some information about the country of Cuba, my mother's birthplace. To get into the mood, the song playing in the background is a well-known Cuban song titled Guantanamera, whose lyrics came from a Cuban poem written by Jose Martí. Cuba is the largest island in the Caribbean. It is only 103 miles south of Florida. Since 1959, Cuba has been governed by the Communist Party of Cuba. This communist takeover is why mis abuelos left Cuba with their family. Cuban culture is a mixture of the different groups that have lived on the island, the indigenous, the Spanish, and the Africans. 
This cultural exchange is seen in the faces of its people, the rhythms of the music, and my favorite, the taste of the island. Some things Cuba is known for today is its beautiful beaches, classic American cars, and colonial Spanish architecture. I am proud to be a descendant of my strong Cuban ancestors who left everything behind to start a new life in America so that their children could be safe and prosper. Hopefully, one day, I will be able to visit the country. Adios. Hi, my name is Michelle Davila, and I wrote a poem for Hispanic Heritage Month. It is called, I Am. I am generous and patient. I am from Peruvian Tunis. I am from the Peruvian flag and alpaca rugs. I am from a loud and welcome, welcoming home and the smell of delicious Peruvian spices. I am determined and educated. I am positive and energetic. I am from Lima, Peru. I am from the Peruvian chamomile tea. I am bilingual and successful. I am honest and proud. I am from La Procesión del Señor de los Milagros. I am from neighbors that are family. I am from canciones y quintales. I am from kiss every single person in the room as a sign of respect and speak when spoken to. I am culture and open-minded. I am Afro-Peruvian and proud. I am from Afro-Peruvian music and cajones y baile. I am from the sacred ruins of Machu Picchu. I am from the Inca language of Quechua. I am from celebrating July 28th, the Peruvian Independence Day. I am from Ceviche and Papa La Huancaina. I am from El Dicho Chimpun Callao. My name is Ms. Perez and I teach 7th grade social studies at HMS. My parents were born in La Republica Dominicana. I was born in the United States. I identify as a Dominican American. My feet roots are planted here in the United States and I carry the Dominican culture in my heart. I just want to relay for those of you who speak in an accent. Accents are beautiful. Accents are amazing. Speaking with an accent means you can express yourself, help others, and make a difference in two languages. Don't ever give anyone the power to make you feel bad because you are gifted with an accent. Hi everyone, I'm Miss Walker at the Hackensack Middle School, and I just want to wish you a happy Hispanic Heritage Month. Remember, Hispanic Heritage Month is an important time because there's a sense of identity that you'll gain from the study of your heritage, and will help explain to others who you are. But most importantly, it will help you explain who you are to yourself. Have a wonderful Hispanic Heritage Month and spread the knowledge. Hello, everyone. My name is America Sotelo. I'm one of the bilingual teachers at the Hackensack Middle School, and I would just like to show you um, where I am from. I was born in the Dominican Republic. I came here when I was 12, and I just want to show you a little presentation of my background on, sorry, background on the country that I was born. So uh, this is our flag, and this is the map of the Dominican Republic. It's situated in between um, the Atlantic Ocean and the Mar Caribe. I put the Tainos there because it's one of the, um, you know, the Tainos, the African and the European contribution to our culture. It's for you to uh, a little bit more about myself. Um, my father was is from Santiago in the Dominican Republic, right on the north part. It's called La Región del Cibao. And if you go to Santiago, this is one of the landmarks. 
el, al, el monumento a la restauración, a los héroes de la restauración, disculpen. Then the next one, um, I'm sorry, if I, I'm going to go back to Santiago. In Santiago, they say that the, el merengue típico, which is the, the drums and the accordion, it's from Santiago. That's what I said. Very proud of that. Um, the next part that I want to show you, the next region, is Barahona in Dominican Republic. This is where my mother is from. So my mom, my father is from Santiago all the way north, and my mom is uh, from the southwest. So they, they met in Santo Domingo, and I was born in Barahona. Another part that I, I'm very proud of in Dominican Republic is where my grandmother is from. Uh, she's from Samana. It's called La Bahia de Samana, or Samana Bay. And again, beautiful, beautiful land, just like uh, as my motherland, uh, Barahona. I want to show you some part of our culture, which is like the merengue, that we all know, uh, the drum. Aquí está, this is the accordion, la guira, la tambora. Also, las maracas, and our ballet folclorico. These are all part of our heritage as being a, a mix of Africans, Europeans, and Tainos. Another thing that we, part of our culture is that uh, on the 27th of February, or February 27, uh, we celebrate El Carnaval, which is the day that the whole entire Dominican Republic, every region, um, come together and they all have their own carnival, sorry carnival, um, we dress in costume, in different costume, like from um, one place that you will find out in my country is that in Las Vegas, which is right here, Las Vegas, they will, um, they make the mask and the costume that people we wear for the carnival. So again, I hope that you learn a little bit more about my country, the Dominican Republic, and uh, you are welcome to visit. Thank you. Hello, everybody. This is Mr. Morel, Assistant Principal at Hackensack Middle School. Hola a todos. Yo soy Señor Morel, Asistente Director de Hackensack Middle School. First and foremost, we want to congratulate all of you who are celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month this month, whether you are Hispanic or you have friends and or family that are Hispanic. Primeramente, queremos darle la felicitación a todos ustedes que están celebrando el mes de la herencia hispana, sea que usted es hispano o que tenga familia o amistades que son hispanos. The Dominican Republic is a Caribbean island located near Puerto Rico and Cuba and its neighbor to Haiti. La República Dominicana es una isla caribeña localizada cerca de Puerto Rico y Cuba. Y claro, somos vecinos de Haití. I also want to share some of the culture and some of the customs we have in the Dominican Republic, the island I was born in. También quisiera compartir con ustedes algunas de nuestra costumbre y la cultura dominicana, que es la isla donde yo nací. Now, perhaps you may have heard about the beautiful beaches, the lush greens, the resorts, and overall tourism that we have in the Dominican Republic. But there's a lot more to the Dominican Republic. A lo mejor ha escuchado la playa linda que tenemos, el turismo y los resort y la verdura que tenemos, pero hay mucho más de la República Dominicana. The Dominican Republic gained its independence from Haiti in February 27, 1844. And as you can see, this is our flag. It's also red, white, and blue. Beautiful colors. La República Dominicana pudo tener su independencia de Haití Febrero 27 del 1844. Como ustedes ven, esta es nuestra bandera y también tiene azul, rojo y blanco. From the rich soils of the Dominican Republic comes the Dominican diet. We eat what we grow on the land. And one of those things that we grow is called plátano or plantain. Plátano is used for foods like mangú, sancocho, and other dishes. Porque la tierra es tan rica en la República Dominicana, parte de la dieta dominicana consiste de lo que se crece o se cosecha en la tierra. 
Una de esas cosechas que es muy famosa en la República Dominicana se llama el plátano. El plátano se usa para hacer mangú, sancocho y otros platos deliciosos. The number one sport in the Dominican Republic is baseball. There is a passion for baseball in the island. We've had a slew of Dominican players make it to the major leagues. Alex Rodriguez, Manny Ramirez, Albert Pujols, just to name a few. And we've had some that actually made it to the Hall of Fame. El deporte número uno en la isla es el béisbol. Hay una pasión grandísima en la isla de la República Dominicana cuando se debe al béisbol. Hemos tenido varios dominicanos que han llegado a la Liga Mayor como Alex Rodríguez, Manny Ramírez eh, y Albert Pujols para decirle uno cuánto. Y han llegado algunos a la sala de los peloteros famosos. We've also had numerous artists who have been successful through the music and playing different genres. Mainly through the genres that you hear most in the land, which are merengue, bachata, and of course salsa. I have three instruments to show you. One is the guira. Another one is the tambora, which comes from our African influence from the drums. And the third one I don't have, but here it is, is the accordion. These three instruments were the staple in the beginning of what we now hear as merengue típico, and now through the addition of other instruments, merengue. Hemos tenido varios artistas eh, que han sido triunfantes sobre la música eh, de diferentes géneros, pero específicamente la música que se oye en la isla, que son el merengue, la bachata y también la salsa. Aquí tengo tres instrumentos, uno de ellos no lo tengo aquí, pero el que está arriba, eh, la guira, la tambora que viene de la influencia de África y el acordeón. Estos tres instrumentos fueron los que empezaron lo que ahora ustedes escuchan como el merengue típico, perico ripiao, o también el merengue. What do Dominicans do for leisure? I'm glad you asked. ¿Qué hacen los dominicanos para el recreo? Me gusta que preguntaron. This is a domino table with dominoes, of course. Esto es una mesa de dominó con dominó. Why do the, uh, Dominicans play dominoes? Well, it's a fun sport, uh, it's recreational, um, it's great leisure, but at the same time, it brings friends and family together in conversation, um, and it always brings that community feel uh, to the domino table. El dominicano le gusta jugar dominó, no solamente por el recreo, pero sino que trae familia y amistades juntos en diferentes eventos y trae un sentido de comunidad cuando se juega dominó. Once again, happy Hispanic Heritage Month to you all. We celebrate with you. De nuevo, feliz mes de la herencia hispana. Estamos celebrando con todo de ustedes. Hablando de celebración, speaking of celebration, here's something for you guys. <laughs> Happy Hispanic Heritage Month to all.